Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise right now, and to give him all the glory. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a powerful God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God. He is so awesome. Yes, he is. He is worthy to be praised. I don't know about you today, my brothers and sisters, but I'm so excited just to be in his presence right now, just to glorify him right now, just to worship him right now, for me to continue to seek him right now, for me to continue to put all my faith, all my trust, and my hope all into his hands once again. Because God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And I'm always encouraging all my brothers and all my sisters that praise is an everyday thing. Yes, it is. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, he is still on the throne and he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day. In the mighty name of Jesus, he is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And if you have not, and if you have not given Jesus the thanks and praise and glory today, what are you waiting on, my brothers and sisters? Open up your heart right now. Invite him in and thank him right now. Praise him right now. Glorify his name and exalt his holy name because he is king of kings. And he is Lord of Lords. And he deserves it all. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Giving y'all thanks, giving y'all praise, giving y'all glory. We thank you, Father God, for the day, the day that you have made. We're so glad to be a part of it and always rejoice in it. We thank you, Father God, for who you are, what you have done, and what you're about to do right now today, Father God. Oh, Father God, we just thank you, Father God, that we is able, able to continue to put our faith and our trust and hope in you and always put you first place. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we're about to receive. We thank you, Father God, for this powerful message today that's going to keep us full today and keep us satisfied today. There's no place, Father God, I'd rather be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God, and thanking you, praising you, glorify and magnify your holy name. Oh, Father God, this is your time. This is your moment, Father God. Let your words go out, and it should not return by void, Father God. Allow your presence to move to this place. Allow your love to move to this place. Allow your angels to join us in praise and worship right now today in your place. Oh, Father God, we just thank you, Father God, right now today. We we'll exalt your holy name right now today, Father God. Heavenly Father, our Father, we can't do this without you, Jesus. So, Father God, we are counting on you right now. We are depending on you right now. And we also are relying on you, Father God. Father God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. The house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Heavenly Father God, you are welcome right now. You are invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord right now. Right here in your sanctuary right now. Right here on your YouTube channel right now. Right here in my sister's homes and my sister's life. Right here in my brother's homes and my brother's life right now. Father God, you have your way right now, Father God. Heavenly Father God, you know exactly what we are going through, what we are facing right now today, Jesus. And Father God, we just ask you right now today, Father God, to touch us right now. Lift us up right now. Soften our heart right now, Father God. Fill us up more with the Holy Spirit right now because we want more of you, Jesus, and less of ourselves. Father God, we let you know today that you're in control, that you're always in charge of all our situations and every circumstance that we are going through right now today, Father God. We're leading it right here at your foot, Father God. We're giving all, all of it to you right now today, Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are welcome right now. You're invited right now to enter to the house of the Lord right here in this sanctuary, right here on Jesus' YouTube channel and also on this platform right now. 
You are welcome. You're invited right now today to enter to my brother's homes, my brother's life, my sister's homes, and my sister's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move through us right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to lift us up right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you right now today to allow us to catch the Holy Ghost fire through this sermon, through this service right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to quiet our thoughts, quiet our mind right now so we can hear your soft, still voice right now. Father God, we just thank you right now. We glorify, we exalt your holy name right now today, Father God. Heavenly Father God, we're here today to let you know that we're available for praise, that we're available for service, that we're available for the kingdom, but most of all, Jesus, that we're available for you. Father God, words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honored and blessed are, Father God, to pray, praise, and have fellowship with all my brothers and all my sisters today, Father God, in your house. Heavenly Father God, please forgive us for our sin, known and unknown right now. Purify us through your blood right now. Wash us as white as snow right now today, Father God. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sin. And thank you for not remembering our sins anymore. Heavenly Father God, before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and the fruit of my lips about you. And I just got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and I shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I pour my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I brag, that's why I boast about you. That's why I talk about you all day long, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I want more and I want more and I want more and I want more of you, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. But let Jesus know right now, let him know right now that you can't thank him, that you can't thank him enough. My parents and my grandparents always told us, be careful how you do people. Be careful how you mistreat people. Be careful who you siding with because when you do someone wrong or you siding with the wrong people, they'll say, watch what I tell you. The moment that you jump ship and you do someone wrong, they're going to do it to you. But when they do it to you, it's going to hurt you worse than what you did to them. It's going to devastate you more than what you did to them. Because it will come a time, my sisters. It will come a time, my brothers. The same people that made sure that you was good, that you were straight, who had your back, who was there for you, even though they didn't have it. The same people that you turned your back on for them, they're going to turn their back on you. They're going to flip on you. You ain't going to need to see it coming. And the reason why they're going to flip on you is because they're going to look at it and say, you was, how in the world can you flip on someone that was so faithful and so loyal to you? If you did it to them, we know for a fact that you're going to do it to us. But what they're going to do, they're going to get you, they're going to get you first before you get them. See, the moment that you did it, they already had you in a trap. Because they looked at it and said, this person right here is not a real one. He fake. She fake. It's not real about them. It's not loyal about them. Because they can turn their back on someone who was faithful and loyal to them. I know for a fact that they'll never be faithful and loyal to us. Even though we persuaded them <laughs> To flip on them. We know whenever they get a chance, they'll flip on us too. But they always going to beat you to the punch. Every single time. So that's why you got to be careful how you mistreat people. Because the same people that you mistreated 
and you flip on them to go to a, to jump ship to hang with somebody else, watch how they do you. Watch how they betray you. Watch how they deceive you. Watch how they leave you hanging. In the midst of all that, you're going to think about what you've done. That's why I say it's going to devastate you more to what you did to them. Because in your mind, the one who is doing it, you think that you are doing something. You are thinking that you have got away with something. But you don't know. You reap what you sow. Every single time. I'm not saying that's going to happen today. I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow. But at some point, it's going to take place. At some point, it's going to go down. At some point, they're going to do it again. And my grandparents, my parents always say, watch what I tell you now. All you do is sit back. The moment that they did it, the show has already begun. My grandparents say, the moment they done it to you, the show has already begun. All you do is sit back and watch them. Mm -hmm. See, they think that they doing something how they did you. They think they got away with the way how they did you. They think that they winning, but not realizing they got to pay the price for what they done. It's all going to come together. And when they come together, when they realize what they did to you, they're going to feel sorry. They're going to feel sorry in the way they're going to say, man, I wish I never died. I wish I never turned my back on him. I wish I never turned my back on him. I wish I never devastated him the way that I did. What was I thinking? What was going on in my mind? What was going on in my head when I did it? That was a real true friend. There was a real true woman or brother or whoever it may be. They didn't deserve what I did to them. And right now, that same person that did it to you, if they're not paying the price for it now, best believe they will pay for the price sooner than later. Like I said earlier, I'm not saying it's going to happen today. And that's how it's going to happen tomorrow. But we sit back. Watch what I tell you. It's going to happen to them. And they're going to think about what they did. See, right now, they think it's all smiles right now. They don't think it's going to happen. They don't think the people who they sided with is going to flip on them. It's all part of the strip. That's all part of the play. And it has to go down the way that it's supposed to go down. And it's going to go down. And guess what? God going to keep you in close proximity to see how it's going to go down. He's going to allow you to see it. He's going to allow you to hear it. You ain't got to go look for my sisters. You ain't got to go look for my brothers. It's going to be bought right there to you. It's going to be bought right there to you. And you're going to see how it's all going to play out. That's what the word of God says. Vengeance is his. And I know right now it got you upset. And I know it got you mad. And I know that you're looking for payback right now. But what you don't realize, my sister and brother, the moment they did it to you, payback was already in place then. You got to sit back and let God do what he's going to do. Because God already knows how it's going to work out. God already knows how it's going to play out. He know what they did is not going to work. He know what they did is not going to last. See, the grass is never green on on the other side as some of them think that the grass it is Judas had to realize that the grass was not green on the other side the same way how Judas did Jesus the same man who fed him who broke bread with him he thought what he did he got away with it he didn't realize it was consequences behind his actions and there are consequences behind your actions, my brother. There are consequences behind your actions, my sisters. When someone made sure that you was straight, made sure that you was A-OK, -okay, who never done you wrong, who never done no harm to you, 
but we're always there. But we're always there for you. We'll do anything for you. It was time they didn't even have it, but they made sure that you had it. It was time that they were struggling, but they made sure that they gave they gave they last to you. It was time they were behind on bills, but they made sure that you was okay before they was okay. But see, you didn't see it that way, now, did you? You didn't think about it that way, did you? No, you didn't because you were too selfish. You were too busy worrying about you. You were too busy trying to side with the wrong team. But see, when you side with the wrong team, when you side with the wrong people, mm -hmm. it's always going to slap you in your face. It's always going to slap you in your face at the end. Every time. How I know? I'm glad you asked me. Can you please turn your Bible to Matthew 27? And we're going to read verses 1 through 5. Matthew 27, and we're going to read verses 1 through 5. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say, Amen. Amen. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. They bound him led him away and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the thirty silver coins to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us, they replied? That's your responsibility. I'm going to start right there. Do you see how they flipped the script on him? Do you see how they didn't even care no more. Don't you see? The same way how Judas did Jesus, they did him the same way. And the reason why they did him the same way because they, they knew Judas was not a lawyer. They knew Judas didn't keep it real. So they had to, they had to beat Judas to the punch before Judas beat them to the punch and the reason they had to do that because they already knew if you can flip on this man right here who was there for you who made sure that you were straight who broke bread with you if you flipped on this man who was loyal and faithful to you you're going to do it to us so they had to beat Judas at his own game so the moral of the story is you got to be careful how you do people because the same way how you do someone they're going to do it to you what goes around, come around, my brothers and sisters. You reap what you sow. The grass is not greener on the other side. And there's some Judases right now that has done us like that. And right now, they are seized with remorse right now. Because why? They are thinking about what they did to us. They are thinking about how they betrayed us. They are thinking about how they did flipped on us for no apparent reason. And now the same people who they sided with does not rock with them no more, don't want to be a part of them no more, don't have nothing to do with them no more, so now they are thinking about us because they miss. They miss how faithful we were to them. They miss how loyal we were to them. They miss our presence. They miss it right now. They can say what they want to say, my brothers and sisters, but I can promise you one thing. They thinking about you right now today, my sisters. They are thinking about you right now today, my mm -hmm. brothers. They thinking about every chance because what they did, they missed their opportunity on the blessing. Now that they're part of the blessing, they don't have that protection no more. When Judas did what he did, he lost blessings, he lost the favor, but most of all, he lost the protection. Look what they say. What is that to us? That's your responsibility. Judas brother said, wow, this is what I did? But now y'all going to flip on me? They said, no, you flipped on yourself because we never told you to flip on the one who was faithful and loyal to you. So we knew that you was never faithful in the first place. We knew for a fact that you were never loyal in the first place. We knew that you had, if you got another chance that you was going to flip on us. So we had to beat you to the punch. Because we knew it, it was evil inside of you. They knew it. That's my grandparents always say, watch. Watch what I tell you. The same people that flipped on you for somebody else, they're going to flip on them. It, that's how the universe works, my brothers and sisters. That's why they always say, what goes around, come around. That's why they say, you reap what you sow. The grass is not green on the other side. And if you have not seen it yet, guess what? 
time is coming that Judas is going to realize what they did. That Judas is going to realize they made a big and huge mistake when they turned their back on you. That Judas right now is crying in remorse right now. That Judas is thinking about everything. Mm -hmm. What they did to you, and they wish they can take it back. That Judas right now is on the phone, dialing your number, and soon the phone pick up, they hang it up. There's some Judas right now, they're trying to get their phone in their hand. They're trying to send you a text message, but they never hit the scene. There's some Judas right now that's on their laptop right now, or iPad right now, trying to send you an email, but they never hit the scene. But because they're thinking about what they did, because who they thought was their real friends had flipped on them. Now they all alone. Nobody want to hang with them no more. Nobody want to rock with them no more. Everybody realize who they are. And when someone realize who you really are, everybody going to know who you are. They're going to say, don't hang with him. Don't hang with her. They'll flip on you whenever they get a shot. They'll flip on you whenever they get a chance. Now, everybody know that your credibility is no good. And once they realize that your credibility is no good, nobody want to hang with you. Nobody want to be a part of you. Everybody gonna know to stay away from you. And that's what the Pharisees did. The Pharisees say, Jews, we can't hang with you no more. We can't rock with you like that. You ain't real. You ain't faithful. You ain't loyal. The Pharisees already knew if Judas got a shot to flip on them, Judas would have did it. For 30 more slips of the corn. So they knew he his credibility was no good. They knew that his his word they didn't carry no way. His word was not his bond. They knew that, so that's why they beat him at his own game. Be careful who you side with. Because the people who you side with, watch what they do to you. They're going to flip on you and side with somebody else. They're going to do it. The moral of the story is, the moral of the point I'm making is, if someone is faithful to you, loyal to you, Make sure that you were straight. You don't side with nobody else. I don't care what kind of nonsense they put in your head. You say, nah, this is a real one right here. I can't do that. With God, how you think and feel about that person, I'm not siding with you. I'm not flipping with you. This is my friend. This is who I'm rocking with. You got to be careful how you mistreat people. Because it will come back around. God will make a way. To show and prove you, don't mess with his own. Because you got to deal with the consequences. And someone knows exactly like what I'm talking about. And God is talking to you. Say, so thank you, Jesus. I know exactly what you're talking about. And if you like what you heard, what you heard, go hit Jesus' like button. Hit the subscribe button bell as well, too. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I was praying a simple little prayer that God is already working everything God in my life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is with us, LT. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he's the author and perfecter of your faith. Always continue to trust him. Even though you don't see anything happening, you don't see anything working. Because God is always working. He's never too busy and he's never too tired. He's always working. Always continue to hold on to Jesus unchanged by hands because you never know when, the, when things might start turning around for you. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. It doesn't matter if you've ever seen them. Just continue to pray for me. My brother and sister, the only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up to you. I'm seven minutes of LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Glory, hallelujah. Amen.